city, 10 kilometers far from Emilia Romagna, where the most uh, of Lambrusco is produced. Uh, most of people don't know that uh, Mantua Lambrusco exists, but uh, here we are and we exist and we produce Lambrusco. Um, our story is uh, a recent story. My husband and me have always been wine lover. We, we took over our old family farm and we analyzed our soils and we discovered that uh, they were perfect to produce uh, organic cultivation. So we live, uh, we lived our jobs and to dedicate our lives to produce artisan Lambrusco, uh, far from the stereotypes of the great production uh, uh, of the great companies. So uh, our fixed idea and our great dream today has become our life. Thanks, Raffaella. Um, so next, uh, we have Francesca uh, Mecchia, who's the daughter of Hilde, of Hilde Petrusa, of Vigna Petrusa. So we have both Francesca and, and Hilde. Um, and I, I think, Francesca, you're going to give the intro, right? Hi, I'm Francesca, and uh, I'm the third uh, generation of uh, uh, women producing wine. Uh, we do, uh, Vigna Petrusa has always been uh, like a family business. The vineyard were at the beginning owned by uh, my grandfather uh, family. And then uh, uh, when he died, my grandmother took over and then my mother and myself. We are in the north of east of Italy, next to the Slovenian border in the Colli Orientali del Friuli. We have eight hectares and we are mainly focused in native grapes. We produce uh, red and uh, white and sweet wines. And uh, we are in an area that uh, uh, has a very important characteristic to for the wines that is uh, like the, the hills that are surrounding this valley and they uh, create like a microclimate uh, that is uh, uh, very good uh, for the flavor and the intensity of the wine. And uh, this is helped uh, by the, um, is a very rainy area, but with the strong winds uh, and the soils uh, uh, helps uh, to have uh, um, very um, original wine from the area. We uh, consider that we are very small. We have a meticulous work uh, and uh, uh, particular control on the, uh, production in every single phase. So we work uh, a lot on the vineyard, um, like selecting all the gems uh, and the grapes. Uh, and then we follow the full uh, uh, production uh, in every single steps. And, uh, and that's it. Tonight we will uh, present uh, one of our wine, my favorite red wine, that is Tere Fosco. Okay, and next we have um, pa Patty and Jackie M Mitchell of Ojai Pacific View. Um, and Patty, you wanna tell us about you and your winery? Yes, um, I took my daughter for a visit to your beautiful country in 2011 and she hasn't come home yet. <laughs> um, that's her. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, that's okay. It's a beautiful country. So um, I spent quite a few years tasting, knowing I felt that I had a good terroir with the south facing slope and 900 meters altitude and ocean influence and all this. So I spent three years tasting and um, every, I mean, somebody had to do it, right? Terrible. <laughs> That's a joke. But anyway, <laughs> Um, and uh, I found a thing in common that all the producers I visited, every producer in Pimonte had this small patch of a grape called Dolcetto. So I said, what is this Dolcetto? And they said, oh, that's what we drink. We sell Barolo, but we drink Dolcetto. So I said, oh, how interesting. So after that, I researched Dolcetto and 
you know, I plant, I bench grafted it here in California and planted Dolcetto. And I'm, I'm really loving it. I'm very, very happy with my wine. Um, I'm, let's see, eight, seven, about five years into it, um, five vintages. And it, it's, it's extremely better than I would have ever expected. <laughs> so um, I'm happy with it. And it's very, it, it does pair with everything. That is a true story. Um, it's fruity, it's dry, it's not too sweet. It's just, I think it's just a light, perfect red wine. If you know, now, if you're looking for a heavy red, you can, you, we all know what a heavy red is. So anyway, that's the story. I also have a company called the Wine Candy Company. And at the moment in Chicago, I have some, a new round of candy being made with my Dolcetto. Um, and I should have that in hand by the 1st of April. And um, we're gonna, That'll be fun uh, to a little to selling and you know, and so that's that. Um, and Jacqueline created my daughter the first wine candy recipe, and, and then I I have another business called Intrepido Spirits, which I'm importing gin and um, brandy and champagne and few other things because I got bored with wine in the last year. I didn't really get bored with wine, but I, I couldn't, there wasn't anything I could do. So I had to find something new. And I have my spirits license in the US for importing and exporting, and that's kind of hard to get. So I decided I'd finally put it to use. Okay. So that's and then, um, and then Antonella Manuli of La Maliosa. Yes. Hi, everybody. It's nice to see you again after a whole year. Yes. <laughs> nice to see that everybody is okay and, uh, and fine. <laughs> uh, so I am a producer uh, from Maremma in Tuscany. Maremma is uh, the southern part of Tuscany. Uh, it's a very unspoiled and still wild area. And uh, we're actually, um, wine has been more recent um, uh, tradition than uh, than in other parts of Tuscany that everybody knows about, like Chianti or you know Brunello, etc. And also my my winery. I, I actually I don't like to call it a winery because we make also a lot of olive oil. I like to call it a farm. So um, uh, my farm is something that I started from scratch. Uh, about 10 years ago and scratch means that I also bought the land where I planted most of the vineyards and the project from the beginning was uh, really based on trying to um, farm in the most sustainable way uh, because this area in Tuscany is really um, is, is very unspoiled as far as nature and environment. And I, I think it's the most precious uh, value that we have here. Uh, so we want to preserve the environment. We want to preserve the scenery uh, and um, we want to produce healthy products. Um, it's quite big, it's 165 hectares. Uh, some of the vineyards are on rocky soil and some of them are uh, on volcanic soil uh, in a place that's close to here. It's, it's called Pitigliano, where, uh, that is close to a volcano called Amiata, which is the mm, tallest mountain in Tuscany. It's very close. Okay. All right, so, um, so it's time to dive into uh, the Q&A and the wine tasting. And so I'll uh, turn it over to Helen. Hello, everybody. Uh, now that we've had a chance to meet a little bit pre the Zoom, I will hear a little bit more with your answers to some of the questions that Sheila and I have worked out for today. One year since the last time you gathered with Sheila for the first Vero talk on um, at the beginning of the pandemic, which Italy was a little ahead of us there. Um, so you may have been, have been experiencing it a little bit longer, but none of us, nonetheless, we've all experienced it. And what we'd like to do today is 
the, we're going to, I'm going to ask you some questions and all of the panel panelists, the four wine women winemakers can answer, but I'm going to direct the question first to, for instance, um, this first one will be to Raffaella. And what we want to know is how your life has changed since the last time we did this Vero talk last March. And Raffaella, if you'd like to start with that, that would be great. You have to unmute yourself, which I think you know. In okay, okay. Uh, everything has changed. <laughs> we, lived, uh, we live in Lombardy, two hours from Milan, and we have always been in the center of the crisis. Um, I think that we miss all of the, um, the everyday small things that we didn't consider until we, one year ago. A uh, smile, a uh, night with friends, uh, hacks. Uh, also today, my children don't go to school. So uh, it's a problem for us, but also for them because we, we, we are adults, but they, they are children, so it's difficult. Uh, I remember uh, the day where, when uh, everything uh, began. It was uh, the last day of February and I was in Florence, in Tuscany, for a, a natural wine fair. And um, our family called us uh, with the phone and they told us to come back uh, to home because there was uh, the television said that, that there was a virus and the government was about to close the borders of our region. So we have to stop working and to come back home. And at the moment, it was strange because we, we laugh about it. We, we were with other colleagues, uh, with uh, all our customers, and um, we didn't imagine <laughs> what, uh, what it was happening. And we, we had our last dinner with them and uh, we, we, um, then we, we come back home. And last week uh, I was in Florence and I uh, met again uh, the customers I knew uh, in that fair in Florence. And uh, it was strange to remember that uh, uh, one year ago um, we were dancing on the table after a party dinner and we, we hugged each other and we drink together a lot of what we don't drink, we tasted wine. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, um, and, and last week uh, we, we, have, uh, we had our mask, uh, we had the alcohol to clean our uh, hands. Uh, we had to keep the distance. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's really strange. Well, we all, we all can remember where we were. It's uh, very similar for us here. Um, I, I remember what it was like. We all remember when 9-11 happened here. We know where we were. We know what we were doing. And when COVID cripples your business, both here and in Europe, it's, um, it, it, it's, it has to get the creative juices going to reinvent your business, to see how we can cope, to see what is next, and perhaps some of the things uh, may remain. What I'd like to do is because we only have uh, 35 minutes, I'd like you, if you have wine, to um, pick up your first glass of uh, Raffaella's wine, Bruno Maria, oh, yeah. Lambrusco, Montevano, and uh, um, Raffaella can, can tell you a little bit about it uh, briefly. And if anybody else would like to answer uh, that same question about how COVID uh, has changed your life right after she tells us in a few words about the wine, um, because the focus today is more about how we're reinventing ourselves and the differences between a year ago and today. So um, 
Rafaela, tell us a little bit about this wine. Uh, Rosso Matilde is, uh, is the Lambrusco, is my favorite uh, Lambrusco, is, um, is a red sparkling wine, it's a demi sec. It's a wine with a strong character, uh, but at the same uh, time it's a uh, pleasant, it has a pleasant roundness. Um, it has the same features of um, Matilde di Canossa, uh, who was a um, great woman, a great countess, and uh, it's the woman that gave the name to our wine. Uh, Matilde was a powerful uh, woman born uh, in Mantua, our land. Uh, she had a key role in the political and the religious wars uh, with uh, the Pope uh, and the Emperor uh, in the north and uh, central area of Italy. Uh, she divorced from an husband that she didn't desider. She adopted a son. Uh, she is the symbol of what can be a strong and clever woman. And she lived 1,000 years ago uh, when women had no authority on their own lives. So she, she did uh, great, great things. Um, and as she, we celebrate International Women's Day tomorrow and Women's History Month, this is a very exactly. wonderful <laughs> character. Exactly. And she was uh, the first to understand the potential of cultivating Lambrusco vines uh, that were wild plants. Uh, she encouraged the reclamation of lands and the nests of the specialized culture. Uh, so uh, our first wine, Rosso Matilde, is for her. Uh, Rosso Matilde is a long fermentation wine made with uh, Salamino, uh, the typical Lambrusco grape uh, uh, that give uh, great tannins and great acidity to the wine and Ancelotta, uh, the grape that gives sugar and fulfill body sensation to the wine. Uh, it's a wine that lives on the equilibrium of these two grapes, uh, uh, the acidity and the sweetness. Um, on the nose, you can see the, the um, characteristics perfumes of the violet and cherry typical of Lambrusco. Um, what, what else uh, can I do? I, if I have to be brief, I yes, think- Yes, well, does anybody okay. else, would anybody else like to uh, share how they have coped um, with the past year and how they are regrouping their life, both personal and maybe professional importance around in your winery? Um, if you'd like to talk, uh, how about Hilde and Francesca? Uh, yes, one year ago, I was with my mom and Sheila in New York, and uh, we were to the Wine Expo having fun, you know, we were still laughing about this COVID, nobody really expected to have a strong change in, uh, in the everyday life and in the business as well. And uh, we took, uh, she, Sheila is becoming emotional <laughs> because mm -hmm. me and my mom were very lucky because we took the last plane that was traveling from uh, New York to London because the flights to Italy were already blocked and we bought a, pl a plane that was stopping in London. So we were able to go back uh, to Italy while Sheila spent, uh, I don't know, three months stuck uh, in uh, in the in US. And so it was, uh, was a very nice, uh, exciting moment. And then suddenly, uh, the same night, they, we received like a phone call because I live between Milan and uh, Friuli. And uh, in that night at two o'clock, we packed and we left uh, and we ran away from the city because I have two little boys. So we were stuck in a flat, so we didn't know what to do. So it was a big change. And I guess that the, we learn a lot, so because we need to be positive. I mean, the situation is not is. In, <laughs> Sheila, don't cry. <laughs> well, you know, Francesca, for all of us who are moms here as well, so, uh, I think yeah, our it's, hearts it's our hearts break for our children. You know, no yeah. school, no and, social life. And do you know what I think? Changely, change. Uh, 
something that I see that is very strange. I always, uh, because my kids, they are like 10 and 12 years old. And I always uh, told them, oh, when you see somebody, hug this person, big smile, you know, shake, uh, shake his hands and uh, be friendly, but be physical, not show your affection. And now it's something that they don't, they don't know how to do because they would like to do something that I've been teaching them. And now I, I can see them, they don't know how to react and they are wearing these masks. They don't, they don't know if they can hug the grandparents. Most of the time we see our grandparents just after you know, having the test. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, uh, you know, you're not sure. We see in the, in the reception of the building, we don't, we don't have dinner anymore as we had before. So this is a, a very strange, uh, um, how, how strange about the way workers? of socializing. How, how about the workers? At the, you mentioned the building. Were you talking about the winery, the physical winery? Uh, yes, we all keep the distance. You know, you are all sort of suspicious. You want to be friendly, but you are becoming suspicious. So you don't, you never know if you can trust the other person. You know, if when you want to welcome somebody in the house or you want to work with, you always ask to yourself, can I trust this person? Am I going to be uh, um, safe after meeting this person? And this person, you know, did I behave properly before meeting somebody that is fragile or is uh, um, older than me? So there is this sort of, a uh, strange atmosphere that is surrounding us. And, well, uh, how are you handling it in the winery though, with your workers? Uh, they, some of them, they been in, because a lot of the people that are working from us for, are from Slovenia. And we are a small uh, company, but most of the people they have been working for us, uh, because now it's my mom and myself, but there are other two ladies, Marina and Petra, and the grandfather, was working for my grandmother. So it's like generation of people always being in the same business. Um, before they were coming in, having the coffee, uh, like in summer, eating a slice of cake together, eating together. Now we don't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, right. We just, uh, you know, when yeah. you, you are in the open air, you don't care, but you know, right. we are just very careful. And then Marina and Petra, you know, Marina has a, like a teenager child. And he got mm -hmm. infected, so they've been uh, uh, locked for 15 days. Right. And then we have problem with the borders because being two different countries, uh, the Slovenian borders at times is closed because the situation is worse there, or sometimes we are closed. So it's a little bit tricky. So how will how will you handle how will you handle that? And this would be a good question also as we segue to Patty um, in a second. How will you handle in the future? as you have to start to hire more people or bring people back, um, are there restrictions uh, imposed by yourself um, as owners of the winery? No, not really. You just need to be careful. And when you work uh, in a, you know, when you go in the uh, cellars, you need to be very careful to wear the mask, you know, because my father is quite old, quite, quite old is 86. So we need to always, everybody knows that they need to be uh, very careful when my father is around because he's much older than uh, all of us. But right. because we've been all, always working with the same people, we take care of each other. So there are good, no strict good. regulations. It's more when the clients are coming for tasting that is a little bit more uh, insecure, I would say. I think, I think that's the general um, uh, desire of a small winery, family-run winery. You do take care of your employees like family. And Patty, what are you doing in uh, Ojai to, um, you know, in, embrace? Basically, basically the same thing as Francesca. I, I mean, you're nervous when it's someone coming to taste wine, someone you don't know, someone you haven't had any dealings with that makes you nervous. Um, kind of say a prayer <laughs> when they come and the, and we you know everyone has masks etc and that's about all you can do is be as careful as you as you can i i meet everyone outside now you know i don't invite anyone in in, in the brick and mortar buildings i you know so you're 
it, it just it's complete You're lucky to be Once, in socal where it's so beautiful yeah, you, know, <laughs> right. you can still have here you can't you know, have but what changes patty what changes right. do you see maybe having to implement going forward post pandemic see any changes uh, i mean we're all hoping that it goes back to the same but we all know there will be I don't think life will ever be the same. We've all right. experienced something that had never happened in our generation, in our time, um, obviously in the past, but not in our time. And so it, I don't think it'll ever be the same. Um, I think the vaccinations are going to help. I received my first vaccination and I go this Thursday to get my second vaccination. And I have to tell you, I'm very happy for that. Um, and basically for what I don't know, because most of the people, you know, that I work with all know that I was, I was kind of high risk, not, not really, but kind of. And so it was, it, it, it was just scary. And so um, I think, you know, I, what I'm looking forward to is being able to travel for my business. Yes. Yeah. That, but I, I think miss. we all miss that personal like I, connection, I which the wine to... business is all yeah. about, human I, I, interaction. Last oh, year, I remember telling you all, I wanted to come to Italy and see my daughter and meet you all and, and you know, in person. Well, obviously that hasn't happened. And um, so, you know, I look forward to that getting back. And then I've been trying to just focus on work because there hasn't been you know the the social was just not been exist in existence uh, maybe one person here or one person there um i'll go into town and treat someone to lunch but you know it's just it's not been the same so um, well we know it's a business of the wine industry is a business of relationships and we can never forget yes. and and now antonella um, I think um, to kind of bring a parallel to what Raffaella was talking about with Matilda di Canosa, uh, I think there's a parallel there as well. Our famous woman coming back and, uh, and rearing her head in Tuscany. So would you like to tell us how COVID has, uh, how you think things may change going forward for uh, La Maliosa? Uh, You're muted. Right, sorry. So um, I think going into the pandemic, nobody really thought this thing was going to last so long. I, I don't think anybody thought that. And um, uh, so, you know, I remember my doctor telling me in, in March, it was going to be over by Easter. Uh, and then it wasn't over. And then you thought it was maybe going to be over in May and it wasn't over. And then in the summer when things opened up and uh, people started traveling again and, uh, and basically running a more normal life, uh, not wearing masks in the open, etc. And you thought it was over and it wasn't over. And then October and November came and it was a new lockdown. And then Christmas was a new lockdown. Now we're in lockdown. And, uh, and then the vaccines were going to come and everything was going to be over and it's not over. So uh, what I think uh, eventually things are going to go back to normal. Uh, you know, humanity has had pandemics all over uh, its history basically and um, However, it's not going to be short term. Right. Uh, I think we are going to, uh, our lives are going to be um, very um, influenced by the pandemic, probably for the next couple of years or, or three. Uh, and, and I mean, you know, the restrictions on travel and wearing the masks and everything, despite of the vaccine. This is what I understand now. <laughs> Right, right. Uh, is that the vaccines are not to solve this thing short term because right. uh, you're going to have to repeat and then you know you, you, there are whole continents not getting vaccines and 
So you, you need to deal with, with all these things uh, until the whole of humanity basically uh, becomes right. uh, with it. Hum Agreed. Um, as we're coming up on um, a, a time here, I want to just, because we'll revisit you, Antonella, because I, I want to hear a little bit about your wine tourism and what you've been doing in your vineyards. Um, but right now, I'd like you to, if you have wine, we'd like to have you taste the Vigna Petruza. Refugio, yes. 2016. And I'd like uh, Hilde and Francesca to tell us how Vigna Petruza or your business has been impacted and how have you been forced to change at all? Um, the, the market is totally different because the, all the restaurants and the wine bars are all closed uh, everywhere, you know. So, but on the other side, uh, you know, being positive, uh, we've been able to sort of sit down and uh, rethink about the business uh, from the physical point of view. You know, we did some uh, um, uh, changes uh, in the wine tasting room in some of the areas of the vineyard. And then we had to learn and try different type of uh, uh, technique to propose our wine, such as uh, wine tasting like today or Zoom call or um, some uh, today was finishing like a, a, a sort of video games. It was a wine fair, it was totally technological. There was like a, a um, uh, yeah, it was like one of the video games that my kids play, you know, I was the, like a, um, a little uh, man standing on my stand when they were, the people wanted to speak to me, they were clicking and I was getting an email. So from the technological point of view, it being very interesting to discover. Well, and, and of course, being a smaller winery, like all of you are, you know, um, the virtual platform and doing virtual tastings, I think a lot of those are going to stay in the future for people yes. to visit you. And so your, it, I think your advantages in terms of technology are the same small winery, big winery. So this is actually a good thing for you. And I wanna hear a little bit more about how, um, you know, COVID has impacted the smaller wineries. If you but, tell us, it, yeah, yours in particular. For, for us, it's been quite exciting because uh, attending to this uh, B2B or different type of wine tasting or, or connection uh, with other people from other countries, we managed to get connection that probably we were never going to have. So we signed a contract in Canada. We won uh, two uh, awards in Japan because we say, okay, we need to expand. We need to go some, some, we need to look for new markets and probably people that we were never going to meet. So we won two awards in Japan and tomorrow they are going to announce the Sakura results and we want other two awards for other two wines. And Sakura is like a women produ uh, producer around the world. So for the, uh, to, to the, tomorrow is the 8th of March. So it's going to be the Women Day. And so from a certain point of view, we reach people uh, that were out of our, um, possibility in a certain way, because if we were not going to a Japanese wine fair, probably we're not able to uh, to meet this type of connection. I think, I think that's a great point, being able to, to expand your network uh, quite a bit as a small winery. Uh, we're seeing the same here, and we're also seeing it with wine education. And um, I'd like to move to the next wine, which is Patty's, uh, Patty Mitchell. Uh, we're tasting the 2017 Ojai Pacific View Dolcetto. And um, Patty, I think um, what we'd like to hear from you as a small winery is A, how it's impacted you, but also um, different, maybe a couple of ways that you're looking at to, um, that might work for you going forward in the future. And, and Sheila alluded to your wine candy company. And, um, so if you have the uh, Dolcetto and you'd like to pick it up and try it, uh, Patty or Jackie can tell us a little bit about the wine and also about your candy business. I'll let uh, Jacqueline tell us about, go ahead. 
Okay. Um, I, I finished this a long time ago, so I can't like officially taste it for you. Uh, this was a suitcase stash and talking about how COVID has affected all of our lives. It's now been um, over a year since I've last been home and been able to visit my family. I've, oh. um, I'm still, I've been here in Italy for since January of 2020. I haven't been home, so. But um, no, this, you know, Dolcetto is kind of, it's, it's a great wine because it's um, really versatile and it's light enough that it can go, it's great to be just drank alone, glass of wine between friends, chat, um, but it's also nice to share with a meal. It can hold up well with a lot of different meats, but also with some lighter, you know, salad type fare as well. Um, this Dolcetto, the 2018 year is the bottle that I have here, um, it was a little bit of a hotter year. So we got um, some abnormally high alcohol on it, but um, mom has oh. recently tasted the 2019. I don't know which one. It's, they're tasting the 2017. And oh, it, I'm sorry. Okay. It's tasting really nicely. <laughs> yeah, no, this one um, I like too. It's got a touch of oak in it and it's a much lower alcohol. So you, you get to really taste the, the fruits and everything. And the 2019 that mom has tasted, I haven't been able to taste it yet. Um, that um, that wine she's said that is is shaping up to be even better than than this one and really shaping right. up to be a, a great a great red wine. Um, just and how are you incorporating all of this into the wine candy business? Well, I um, kind of started them both at the same time, and um, Jacqueline and I started the wine candy company. Then she left and moved to Italy on me. And so um, I've kept it going. You know, it's a, just a limited liability. Well, I'm a new, I'm new. So tell me what it is. I, I have. Oh, okay. It's a gummy. It's a oh, gummy. gummy. We do Edibles not... as in. Edible. And oh. candy. cannabis sativa. No, 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 no. <laughs> just um, um, it, it, the. Yeah. The original idea kind of stemmed from uh, I was playing in the kitchen and I had a bottle of wine that had been open for a little too long. And I said, I wonder if I could make jello with it. And it just kind of went from there. And so then mom liked the idea and ran, ran with it. Mom. I found a food scientist in Chicago. Sheila knows about him and he's, he's really wonderful. But it took Jacqueline and I two years to find a food scientist that would work, would work with me with wine. And so this guy took it on. He's the best in the country and uh, a great, I, I think he's like, I don't know what you guys call Santa Claus, but I look at him as a Santa <laughs> Claus. <laughs> and so he's done like all the famous candy for Ferrero, for Hershey's, you know, he's he's got a, a, quite a lab in Chicago. So. It, it's a gummy and I didn't want it to stick in people's teeth. So I didn't want it all gelatin. I wanted it pectin and it had to have a, the right ratio. And then it had to maintain the bouquet and the taste because the, my company statement is the candy with the fine finish. Okay. So I wanted to you for you to be able to chew a gummy and taste the we used to do blind tastings in the beginning got pretty drunk doing them but we we would do blind tastings of different candies we just made with maybe six different alcohols and we we could pick out the candy and the alcohol well, the, the, the reason I brought that up Patty and Jackie is in the United States right now the big debate even for small, you know, producers is that um, when you talk edibles or gummy bears, it's the distribution of can of cannabis in the United States. And yeah. so that's why I was a little confused. Right. But it's, no, it's no, no, no. Very interesting. Nothing. And there, yeah. the idea is um, it was really important to me. Mom was talking about um, in the beginning how we did. We got a little uh, a little drunk on them. My initial test had alcohol. I didn't cook really? the alcohol fully. Yeah, and she made so, you know, tasting so you pivoted. a couple. You pivoted and you brought your wine to a candy. That yeah, but it's also a candy that's non-alcoholic. So it doesn't have 
to get you drunk to enjoy it. Okay. Okay. Is, you know, so it, that's. Well, we want to learn more about that. I'm going to have to okay. call both of you and talk about uh, it. Yeah. Move to the next, uh, the next uh, wine, which is Antonella Manuli's uh, Maliosa Rosso Matilda 2018 Vintage, which is new on the market here in uh, the United States. And we will be getting this vintage in Boston, I believe, right, Sheila? No, well, th this wine, the 2018 oh, Maliosa is uh, available for sale now uh, in United and, States. yeah and we'll be importing another uh product of antonella's which is called saturnia yeah, rosso oh rosso saturnia rosso yeah so um i have tasted this wine before lovely i'd like you to tell us a little bit about it yes briefly and then i'd like you to tell us all the different plans that you may have for a future direction of your winery mm -hmm. and farm. I know you produce olive oil as well, organic olive oil. Yeah. And we really want to know because Americans are dying, just like Francesca said, to travel. Everybody's got their passport ready. They want to travel. And California and Italy are the United States consumers of travel. Those are their biggest destinations for wine travel. So what are your thoughts on wine tourism as well? I'm okay, uh, you would like me to start with the wine. You can just see it. You can see Caterina in the little bit uh, there with, with the bottle because I'm without wine tonight. <laughs> so she's got, she, Caterina actually is, is the lady in charge of our uh, uh, winery visits. So if you get to travel, you will... <laughs> Get in touch with her. <laughs> okay. So the um, Maliosa Rosso, which means red, of course, is made out of this uh, grape called Ciliegiolo. Uh, I didn't mention before, we only work with ancient grapes. Uh, what it means is grapes that were here, grape varieties that were here for at least 100 years uh, on the territory. Um, this is why we don't say autochthonous grapes, so we say ancient or historic. So Ciglia Giolo is uh, thought to be one of the ancestors of Sangiovese, and it's very typical of um, so the south of Tuscany or uh, in general central Italy. And uh, uh, like the name, which means like a cherry, uh, you can imagine a lot of red fruit. And it's, it's not a complicated wine. You don't have to be an expert in order to appreciate this wine. And, and it's, it's very nice uh, to have uh, in a happy hour or um, uh, in Italy we say aperitivo, so before dinner, but uh, um, uh, it's a balanced wine. It doesn't have a lot of tannins, it's quite smooth. And so uh, I think it's very easy to um, pair with, uh, with uh, a lot of foods actually. Uh, of course, you know, in, in Tuscany, we have the soups, we have the red meat, but really you can uh, also pair with a lot of uh, different kind of pasta with maybe um, meat sauce and things like that. Uh, of course, we make natural wine. So what this means is according to the Metodo Corino, here is the book wrote or written by Mr. Lorenzo Corino, whom I work with. And um, what this means is we, ha we have very low intervention uh, in the vineyards. Uh, an Italian journalist that is, is a very famous uh, food and wine journalist, actually when, when he speaks about our vineyards, he says vigne libere, which means free vineyards because they are free actually from a lot of the things you know, that you normally see like the Row very tidy, you know, and narrow, and uh, we we don't we don't even have a row actually. We we don't. Um, so if you come to to visit La Maliosa, uh, you you will probably be surprised by the look of our vineyards. 
Uh, we call them, a lot of, of the vineyards that I planted with uh, Professor Corino, we call them Vigna Giardino, so they are garden. We treat them like our garden. It's uh, how much care we put into those vineyards and also the look you know, of, of the vineyard. Uh, is um, you really have to see it. I mean, it's very hard for me to describe. This is why actually I am not a big fan of the virtual tasting. Of course, you know, we do virtual tasting now because this is the only thing we, we can do. But I really think that once we will be able to travel again, this is the real experience, you know, the real experience to meet the people that make the wine, walk the vineyard, smell. We're losing all the smell here. I mean, yeah. it's, it's too much, I think. See the soil. See yes, the walk in the soil, smell, you know, the smell of, of, the, of the grass and all the different herbs that we have and, you know, the woods, uh, feel the temperature of the air. These are things that maybe we don't think about a lot, uh, we, we took for granted, but now it, that we don't have them, I really think um, that virtual can't make up for all of this. So going to the tourism part you were asking about, Helen, um, we started last year, actually my, my tourism project is, is, is quite complex and it's not, it's just beginning. And of course, we were so lucky because we, we began right, you know, the year of COVID. But in a way, um, we started with this uh, little uh, thing called the Starbucks, which mm -hmm. maybe you were mentioning, which is a, is a design hut. Um, uh, maybe, maybe Sheila, I don't know if you, if you can, uh, well, you can see it on our website. It's a, it's a hut. Uh, Actually, it's more like a glamping uh, structure uh, in the middle of this very scenic vineyard. And you can sleep there and open the roof. It's very easy for anybody can just walk there and open the roof so you can sleep under the stars. And we will provide you with um, a basket, a picnic basket with uh, a choice of natural wine. And of course, uh, a selection of our typical um, cheese and hams and um, olive oil know, ol olive oil <laughs> exactly um, so th this was a big success last year and uh, so this year I'm putting in a, a new one so we we're going to have two different stars box in different locations and I hope since I'm in the process of, of getting permits to build all of my um, uh, I, I will have uh, dwellings, yeah. Dwellings, yes. Uh, a touristic uh, development on this Monte Cavallo, uh, which is going to take a couple of years. And I really hope by the time we have built everything and we will be able to uh, open uh, for the public, also, COVID will be gone and have a more normal. Um, well, you know. I think, I think that. Um, you know, it, it, may, it will be a little bit uh, of time before the majority of Americans travel. I do know that um, there is travel going on, but with private jets and people who can afford that. And, uh, but it really, it, it, it is, it will be a while, I'm sure. Uh, so we have some time to think up creative ways to get our hands back in the dirt and to uh, walk the vineyards and acknowledge the gorgeous trellising systems of, that are sometimes very unique to small vineyards. And um, I'd like to turn this back to Sheila now. And uh, thank you all for joining in with us mm -hmm. today. This uh, live Facebook and Zoom meeting will be recorded. So if you have friends and family, you'd like to, um, wish we had more time, I could have chatted with all of you for another hour. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it, we are limited. So, um, well, let's, um, let's open it up to questions. Yeah. Um, I have something I'd like have, to say. Um, what's that? Were you going to say something, Patty? Yes, I'd like to say something that to Antonella, well, to all of you, because we're doing something similar to what you described that you started a year ago. Here in Ojai, it's become big because we're close to the city. Like, but I'm starting a, like, it's called Pacific, uh, 
view branch of venue business. And then in that venue business, they, you know, the people that subscribe like a wine club, they can come up and they can camp for 24 hours because I, I happen to have the licenses or they can hike. I'm doing gazebos, building dwellings and um, allowing people to come up with families and experience the vineyard, experience the dirt, the smell. And um, it seems to be going quite well. And um, there's a lot of them already ahead of me in Ojai. And they're, you know, they're making okay money, opening up their land, but they would have never done this, nor I, if it wasn't for what happened to us. And it's a new way because people wanna be outside. They don't wanna go stand at a bar in a tasting room. You know, they want to be outside. They want to experience the outside. So I have this thing going, I can't describe it. I'm partners with a, a French man in Los Angeles called, and it's, we have Grand Pacific uh, Taste uh, Holding Company. And we're, he's literally selling six vines for $10,000. <laughs> and then they get a free case of wine every year. Anyway, it's this big, it's a business plan, but it reminded me, and it's his idea, not mine. I'm just helping him because I'm licensed. And so anyway, Antonella, that reminded me of it, of, you know, sleeping under the, and looking up at the stars, your idea, that's what people are wanting to do here. So that's all. Yeah. I, I agree. I mean, uh, the future, uh, people are, are becoming more aware of nature and uh, the value of nature and, um, and the environment. And so I think in the future, they're going to look more uh, for this kind of experiences. And my friend's mm -hmm. idea is fabulous because these are people that, like he's, he's saying in the beginning, that can't afford a vineyard. No, not everyone has two, three million laying around. Um, and, you know, it's allowing people to feel that they own, you know, six vines and they can have their own label once a year and, you know, have, ha, yeah, it's really a great, it's a great idea. And this, this is a shift. And he's also bringing block, blockchain in. He just made me a gold blockchain coin for my ranch. Right. So my daughter's into blockchain in the East Coast. And so, you know, we're, we're taking the newest technology with ideas that would just never have happened and no one. And we've talked to, um, Bart's talked to, he's got, I don't know how many signed up from Napa already. Big wine, right. big mm. night, big names that are willing to sell off six vines for 10 grand and, uh, give somebody a case, one case of wine and allow them one visit a year. And then, so it's, it's amazing how the people, he put it out on the net and he just, he had so much response. I can't even tell you guys how, of just people wanting to be able to have an opportunity to, to touch the earth and be a part of it. So, okay. <laughs> That's the future. Um, all right, so I, um, uh, I, I'd like to open this up to the audience. Um, if you'd like to ask any questions, um, feel free to unmute yourself. Sheila, you did put Shy. it in the chat. There you go. <laughs> uh, the, all the wines are available. That was great. I bought a four pack and it was... Um, well worth the value for the four wines. So um, thank you for that, for putting that together. Yeah, I've, I've been putting in the chat uh, all the wines that we tasted. And, um, and I, I also mentioned about this set. We have a special um, uh, woman winemakers red collection uh, set that has all these four wines available for purchase uh, for um, $113 that includes shipping. And that's on our website, verovinogusto.com. That's a special for this month because this month is uh, Women's History Month. Tomorrow is International Women's Day. So it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a moment, uh, I think, uh, I, I think you all 
uh, have, have commented on, on you know, th these are extraordinary times that we're in. And, and, um, and I think women uh, have a great way. One of our strengths, I think, is, is um, uh, let's say, being able to express ourselves with one another. And, and I think this was a, a special chat this evening, or this could be this morning, <laughs> depending upon where you are. Um, Sheila, can I, can I mention very briefly, because maybe um, people are not aware that in Italy, we're having a huge crisis uh, about women because 98% of the jobs that were lost were uh, jobs lost by women, uh, which is something really, it's a disastrous situation. And this was, of course, done in order to uh, keep, uh, you know, the, the family running uh, during the pandemic, you know, children and, uh, and elders. And um, so I, I think it, it's kind of a, it's, it's a very sad women's day for Italy tomorrow. It's, it's here as well, because if you're, for instance, a teacher, a school teacher, and you have school age children, you're teaching Zoom online, you're making sure your children are paying attention. And then in some cases, people are just losing their jobs. Unless you're in medical or you know, you're a first responder, it's women have also not done well here in terms of job losses. Um, and um, so I think, but Italy, I understand, um, Sheila told me that uh, Italy is is actually a little uh, behind on vaccine distribution. I think yeah. like all of Europe, I don't think- All of Europe, yes. Yeah. Very much different from other countries in Europe. Yeah. So hopefully things will get better. Well, we need, to, we need to all be strong and, um, and support other women and um, keep drinking women-made wine. <laughs> Definitely. All right. And well, I, let's cheers you know, to the well, future for all of us. Yes, cheers. I don't have any wine. <laughs> I have to get some wine. So I'll have to see um, then do you guys a sample of the wine candy. We have. When okay, I get that's it. that's a deal. We all yeah. uh, all four of these wines will be on my dinner table tonight. <laughs> oh, I'd like to be there for dinner. <laughs> I can't cook for myself. Take, you have to my take a picture, a Helen. Okay, I will. Yeah, and post I'll be, us. I'll be in touch. And so, and uh, okay. everyone, um, so again, our website is verovinogusto.com and uh, and then just uh, keep in touch via social media. So, thanks. Thanks, and Robin. Thanks for your like comment. It. Uh, okay. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye. 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 Bye.